Ministry Spotlight today, interview with Tina Tatum from r3themovement.org about Human Trafficking Awareness Month. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Today I have an amazing interview with Tina Tatum from R3TheMovement.org. And uh, Tina and her husband, Alan, are not just hearers of the word, but they're doers of the word. She's going to be talking about human trafficking and what R3 does, what it's all about, and how you can help and uh, strap your seatbelts. You're going to hear some alarming statistics. This is definitely a worthwhile ministry. I'm going to go ahead and urge you to share this with your friends and family and see how you can get involved. The contact information will be at the end of the interview. So here we go. Here's Tina. Get the Conrad Rocks app now. Listen anytime. Listen everywhere. Greetings, everyone. It's Conrad from ConradRocks.net, and I have an amazing ministry spotlight today. I'm on the phone with Tina Tatum from TinaTatum.org. She loves God and people passionately. She's always doing wild stuff out here in the, the Memphis, North Mississippi region. She's the founder of One Voice Mississippi and a state leader of Reformation Prayer Network under Dr. Cindy Jacobs. She currently serves as the DeSoto County Chairperson for the National Day of Prayer. And today we're talking about the R3, R3 the Movement, Reach, Rescue, and Redeem from R3TheMovement.org. How are you doing, Tina? Wonderful. Thank you, Conrad, for having us on this morning and helping us shine the light of Jesus into some very dark places. So we're always excited about getting the opportunity to share. So we thank you so much on this new year. Well, you're an inspiration to Susan and I. We just love watching you on Facebook and what you're doing all over the place and actually coming and and joining. (laughs) Yes, you do. Y'all do. Thank you so much for that. You don't just talk about it. You You are action. So we so appreciate that. Lighting and stoking the fire is a revival. Yes. Um, so we're talking about R3, and this is a worthwhile ministry. This is awesome, actually. So in January's National Human Trafficking Awareness Month, what can you tell us about that? It's, it's recognized by all you know abolitionist groups, and abolitionists simply meaning uh, those who want to see it end to slavery and who work towards that. So it's recognized, and it was also uh, signed into proclamation um, by President Barack Obama, We have also locally, we have um, here in South Haven, northwest Mississippi, uh, Mayor Darren Musselwhite signed a proclamation declaring it. We have the mayors of uh, Shelby County and Memphis and the mayor of Tennessee. Uh, We're still waiting on response from Mississippi, but, you know, the holidays have been been going on. So basically the proclamation for the month and for the actual day of January 11th is basically a day to bring awareness It's a time where communities, leaders, organizations can stand and say, you know, we do take a stand. We recognize that there's a problem, and we take a stand against such exploitation in our sphere of influence. So human trafficking, you're equating that with with slavery in today's terms, right? Yes. um, You know, slavery in the United States of America, uh, with the passage of the 13th Amendment in 1865, um, it was abolished then. Uh, but the practice of selling and exploiting uh, humans continues to occur. In fact, the United States is, mu- is ranked among the top five countries uh, where human slaves are sold and exploited for labor or sexual purposes. And this happens in the United States of America every 30 seconds. So how come we don't know it? I mean, you know, that doesn't seem to be publicized. Right. Yeah, it's not something we like to, you know, and when I go and speak, you know, we're just kind of radical and out there, and there's the group of people who want to hear about it, and they're way, you know, hey, we want to do something about it, and the numbers are so massive and they're so huge, they then go back home with it and they feel a little overwhelmed. Yeah. You know, and we have a saying that not no one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Amen. We can't Amen. be paralyzed by the numbers, because once we know we're accountable, um, you know, one of the things that slavery does and uh, human trafficking, whether it be for sexual exploitation or or forced labor, uh, bondage, um, 
servantship is that it strips a person in our nation of the promise that every person is offered in the United States the basic rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. Liberty is freedom. Life is just that. It's life. It's not a death culture and a death structure where someone is forced and beaten and exploited. So um, so one of the reasons we don't see it so much, we don't hear about it, one thing in the Mid-South, DeSoto County, Shelby County area where we live, um, and we do work across the nation, but we're planted here so we have a lot more uh, involvement, is that we don't really have a red light district. And, you know, people think, oh, well, L.A., New York, you know, places like that, well, sure, prostitution or things like that go on because it's more visible. Here in this region, it's very hidden. And, you know, that's just the way the enemy works. He's in the shadows. He's, he's always doing things in darkness until someone is willing to step in and be a voice for light and for life and shines the light of Christ and the light of awareness, you know, on, on the things of this nature. So we're helping to do that. National Human Traffic and Awareness Month helps to do that nationally. Uh, and hopefully, um, we also are working on a billboard campaign, which you'll begin to see around the Memphis area, and digital billboards, bus station terminals, and things of that nature that are going to reach the people who are on the streets, as well as bring awareness to those driving down the street. Amen. So do you have any, like, statistics to mm-hmm. kind of, so we can sh- see what you're talking about? on the? Absolutely. Okay. okay, so here's some of the hard truths. This is domestic. So this is within the United States of America. And this is what first, this first statistic is what drew my heart in. Uh, my husband got the call first to be drawn into this because his background in law enforcement, uh, 20 years law enforcement, 16 with the FBI. And so his skill set was there to do this kind of work. Um, and then the anointing came <laughs> when he gave his mm-hmm. life to Christ. But this statistic is the first thing that drew my heart in. And it is this, the average age, and this gets me every time, the average age of a person of a young girl being lured into sex trafficking is 13. It's 12 to 14 is the average age. Um, But 13, you know, hits obviously right there in the middle. And when I first heard that statistic several years ago, our daughter was 13. And I began to see the videos. I began to hear. um, We began to get, my husband began to get called on for his skill set to be used with some rescue operations and some uh, collaboration with other freedom-fighting organizations. And uh, it just gripped my heart. And I said, oh, no, not on my watch. You know, um, and it, it made it very personal to me in a very quick way. So 13 is the average age. We have 1.68 million children who want, run away from home every year in the United States of America. Wow. Now, all trafficking victims aren't necessarily runaways, but this is a huge part of it. Um, and of those runaways, one in three one out of three will be lured into prostitution within the first 48 hours of leaving home. I had a young woman sitting in my car. She was 19 years old. I was driving her from uh, about a 45-minute drive. And you would have thought I was hearing these statistics in a CNN interview in my front seat of my car. She affirmed and validated every point, every statistic we have. So these are not just numbers on a piece of paper. She validated the fact that she ran away from home. At the age of 13, she was in the strip clubs in Memphis. And, you know, I tell people all day long, you can stick your head in the sand and say, oh, well, the age to get into clubs and stuff is 18 or 21. Well, go ahead and stick your head in the sand because deep darkness does not know social economic status. It does not know age or gender. And so, you know, those are the average age. And she validated everything. She was first sexually abused at the age of two, was in the foster care system, ran out away from that at 13, um, and then found herself just needing some money and thought she could just strip for a little while to make enough money to get herself on her feet. And especially in the Memphis market, you don't do anything like that alone. Um, there's always someone in control. And so she found herself under the control of an individual. These minors, going back to the stats, these minors, if you, one child, say at the age of 13, is, can turn a trick or is trafficked on an average of 15 times per day, which means they're sold on an average of 15 times per day for sex. Three more stats I want to share, 100,000 times a year. 100,000 times a year in America, the land of the free, underage girls are sold for sex. And uh, 9.8 billion right now, actually that was 2015 stats, and that is what is re- what we know of. There's so much we don't know because it's so hidden, but $9.8 billion in revenue in the sex industry in America last year. 
And then the uh, final statistic I'll share on domestic is it's uh, sex trafficking is the number two money-making enterprise for the criminal world. Uh, it has surpassed illegal arms trade, and it is only second to the drug industry. That's sad. I mean, that's, uh, no wonder. Okay. Um, what does uh, R3 stand for, and what exactly does R3 do? Well, R3 is... R represents reach, rescue, and redeem to the third power. So it's three. It's a three-prong approach yeah. that the Lord gave us. Um, because think about it, Conrad. God reached. Holy Spirit drew us. He rescued us out of darkness, and then He redeemed us by His blood. And that's what He did for all of us. So it was kind of our mantra and what we were doing. So it just flowed out real simply um, into a um, into a three-prong approach that we use for reaching. Um, the community and reaching victims. Um, the reach approach is we work to champion a message um, of a world that's free of forced labor or sex trade. Uh, under the reach prong, we would do things like advocacy, uh, awareness, speaking on a, a show like this, a pro- broadcast like this. We do aware uh, prevention training like reduce the risk. We have Internet safety classes. Um, we are just a voice to awaken people that we can make a difference. We feel our primary call to awakening um, is the church, because this was birthed out of a heart of believers. And I'm just telling you, if the church, if we had been doing the things that God said was pure and undefiled religion over the last 50 years, you know, taking care of the widows and the orphans, the single moms, uh, mentoring, being the fathers uh, so that girls had a proper father figure and that young men knew how to treat young girls, um, this nation, we wouldn't be looking at these statistics today. That's right. That's so right. We champ- yeah, we champion the voice to wake up. There's no condemnation. We can't go back. But what can we do today to turn the tide of this? Um, because it happens in the church as well. Um, we have firsthand um, testimonies um, of a woman that we work with in another ministry who was first trafficked um, by a pastor in Mississippi. Her johns were deacons and board members um, as a young girl. She was told that this is what her body was created for, uh, was scared to death that, you know, she was going to get in trouble. This was, gonna, you know, it, it uses manipulation, fear, and torment. So it's not something that's just for the underprivileged. I said earlier, deep darkness doesn't know social class, doesn't know gender, doesn't know any of that. So we champion a voice to reach every demographic that we can with the message. Um, that's the reach aspect. Rescue, uh, we believe in being the hands and feet. You know, hey, there's something about in the Bible says something about faith and works, you know? Mm-hmm. Amen, <laughs> amen. So, uh, so we're, um, with my husband's background, this is, I, I kind of hit more of the, I, I champion the voice of reach where he's in there with me when he can be, but rescue is really his um, operational um, aptitude is that he has. Um, and we, have, we do operational support. Um, we actually do physical on-site rescue. Um, we do transport for other ministries who um, are working in it, and um, we work with other people who do like housing and aftercare, and we're the we're the hands and feet that go because Alan and he has a team that understands how to be safe and doing what we're doing as safe as we can. Um, we're able to do investigations and training. We support local law enforcement, uh, and we work for new legislation. It's one of our 2016 goals is to get some deeper legislation in our state. Uh, and to bring some accountability to lawmakers. And then, redeem. <laughs> Amen. You know, um, a redeemed life is possible for everyone. Christ came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to redeem us from the curse. Um, and so we come alongside survivors to see them fully restored, spirit, soul, and body. Um, and, you know, that means from <clears throat> every time we have the opportunity in, in rescue, we are sharing the message of Jesus of a perfect God who's not looking for perfect people, but he's looking to be a perfect Savior. Um, And then we partner with people um, who do aftercare and housing, such as 51 South Foundation, um, House of Grace, different people like that, who actually are um, skilled and have a skill set for housing and aftercare. You actually can provide a place for the girls to go then? Yes. Okay, amen. And and, in in this state and out of state. Sometimes the, the victims, it, it's a, it's always a serious nature, but sometimes they need to get out of state and get as, you know, as far away geographically as they can. So we have surrounding states that have safe houses as well. Amen. So what what can people do to get involved or help? 
the first thing they can do is pray. Um, prayer is a force that uh, moves heaven and earth. Um, when two or three agree is touching anything, we know we have it of our Father. Um, we're partnering in with, with your initiative and with others' initiative, initiative of the 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting for America. Um, you know, we believe that, that prayer changes things. It changes the hearts of men and women. Um, so prayer is the first thing. Um, being a voice, um, connecting with us on social media, uh, getting on the website, signing up for the the um, newsletters, requesting a speaker, you know, letting us come out and speak. This this broadcast will meet, reach many people, reach many people, and then those people have a sphere of influence. So, you know, if we can come and champion the message and also let them know that there's hope, um, you know, there's not one place I've gone and spoke where the, our voice and the message hasn't hit someone that was once sexually abused or possibly even um, trafficked or prostituted. If we have more than 10 people in a room, there's someone who's been sexually abused. And so um, we always have the opportunity to minister grace and healing. So let us be a voice. You be a voice. We have hands and feet operational support, uh, which we'll put on our uh, Facebook page and also our website that's coming in 2016. Um, we're partnering with Out of the Darkness, which is out of the Atlanta Dream Center, to uh, get operational training. And so we have uh, training opportunities if people, want, though, of course, there's background checks and whatnot, but if women feel they're called to do, you know, some of the frontline work with the women or if men want to partner with my husband to do the operational side. And then for the everyday person that doesn't feel like, you know, okay, I'm not called to go physically do that, um, we have a program called Backpacks to Freedom, which is so vital. You would not believe the difference. Um, and some of your friends have been involved in helping us get supplies for that. Uh, but that packs the freedom. Basically, it's like a transition bag. When we get these girls or these, um, we haven't rescued any boys yet, but they're out there. They're out there. We're, we're going to get them in Jesus' name and get them healed. Amen. But um, the backpacks give them everything they need, and it's theirs, like shampoo, personal hygiene, a Bible, um, you know, just hygiene items, flip flops, t shirt, because I leave with the clothes on their back. And so this gives them hope, and it's all brand new. And you would just see the faces on these girls is that we're not trying to get anything from you, we're trying to get something to you. Hallelujah. So, um, yeah, so Backpacks of Freedom. Mm-hmm. We do monthly outreaches. We, I could just go on and on, but it's all there on the website, and we post all the time on Facebook of how you can get involved. Amen. What about the prophetic voice, or what does Jesus have to say about all of this? Well, he has a lot to say. Amen, he sure about. does. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, do we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? You know, Proverbs 31, 8 and 9, um, before this very wise mother is giving instructions to the king about the virtuous woman that, um, you know, he's to look for and will find, he, she says this in verse 8 and 9. She says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and the helpless and see that they get justice. Um, See, we're not just created to be an island in the stream. It's not just our four and no more. It really isn't. We are our brother's keeper. Uh, God gave us a responsibility. When Jesus left this earth and he said, it's expedient that I go to my Father, that the Holy Spirit would come, the Spirit of truth, the one who will guide you into all truth, he'll show you things to come. It was not just so we could sit here and know things. It's so that we could do something about it and be his ambassadors on earth and to do the things that Christ said that we would do, which was his mandate. He said greater things we would do, which is to, um, you know, see the captive set free, recovery of sight to the blind, spiritually and physically, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, to preach the gospel to the poor, poor in spirit, poor, you know, physically. So, you know, he has a lot to say about that. And, you know, one of the scriptures I love in Matthew, where Jesus talks about, um, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, right before that, um, it's the dissertation in there, and it talks about the people who sat in deep darkness have seen a great light. Mm -hmm. And upon those who sat in the region, light has, um, and a shadow of death, light has dawned. And so, you know, we're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. Christ left us that mandate. And so we're to go into dark places and, and you know, and to shine the light of Christ in those areas because he's the only hope. He's the only hope for this nation, for the world. He is the one. He's the healer of the brokenhearted. And he doesn't say go alone. 
He doesn't say, oh, go and do this. He's the only living God that says, I'll go with you. I'll go with you and do it. I'll empower you by my spirit um, to go and do this. And it's not an impossibility because nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Tina, before we get into the events, I noticed you talked about an event in January and, and, and about your contact information. I want to make sure everybody gets that. Can you pray? Can you pray what the Lord just puts on your heart regarding this? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Father, we thank you. God, we love you. Jesus, we just declare your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So, God, we declare your righteousness, your peace, and your joy, which is our strength, God, to come to earth as it is in heaven, Father, in individuals who have a heart for you already, God, and then move our feet. God, don't just move our hearts, but move our feet, move our hands, God, to be the hands and the feet of what, God, you first came to do on earth. God, it wasn't just to give us a ticket to heaven. It was to get heaven to earth. So, Father, I thank you that your desire is not one should perish, God, and not in the issues of human trafficking, but not in any sin that we find ourselves in. So, Father, I just call right now. I make a clarion call by the Spirit of the living God, God, the you're raising up a remnant. You're raising up a remnant of worshiping warriors who are going to hear your heart and who are going to be the hands and feet of your church, God. And we're going to see great revival come out of this. God, great awakening come out of this. So, Father, whatever portion, whatever portion a listener can be a part of, whether it's in prayer or in financial support, God, whether it's in uh, giving us a voice in their sphere of influence, Father, I just pray right now you would affirm and confirm that in their lives. And God, together, together we're so much better. So God, I thank you that as we come together, we will see, um, Isaiah says this, Isaiah 61, is that, oh, he said, darkness, even deep darkness would cover the earth, but the glory of the Lord would be seen upon you. So God, I declare as we go, your, your glory is seen. God, not our efforts, but your glory. And, God, that the revelation and the knowledge of your glory would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Father, we say, yes, Lord, come and do what only you can do in our midst, Father. Reach, rescue, and redeem, God, those who are most at need. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we agree. That was awesome. You mentioned an event in January. What what else is going on? Yeah, we got lots going on in in January because we're kicking off the year. You know, we're trying to get um, awareness out there. Okay, so let's start today with this great broadcast. (laughs) Um, Thank you so much for giving us a voice. This is the first thing of January, so we're like honored. We're so like that's like prophetic for us to say it's the first. You know, we're stepping into it with light hearted and then we're trumpeting the name of Jesus together. Amen. Uh, Monday we're on TBN at four p.m. Mary Beth Conley show um, airs. Um, Thursday, 9.90 a.m., and I think they'll repeat that as well. Um, we'll be on live at 9. Those are some of the media outlets, but um, physically the things people can do. Um, on January 11th, um, the day of national human trafficking, uh, that awareness day in the middle of the month, uh, we will have a, a prayer call that we will post um, on, on our website, and you know, I can give you the number and all right now if you'd like, or at the end of the show, where people can call in, and we can agree from across the country to the end of this. Amen. And really what we're going to agree about is that the awakening comes to the body of Christ and to the church, and that Jesus is exalted, because where he is exalted, all men are, and women are drawn in. So Jesus is the answer, and then we're going to touch on some human trafficking aspects. So January 11th, and on January 11th also at 6 p.m., We are partnering with um, Le DuJour Incorporated, which is a parental empowerment ministry. They go in and educate parents. You know, we've had such a breakdown of the family unit over the last um, decade. And so we're partnering with them for a freedom dinner at 6 p.m. at Holiday Inn in South Haven. And you can come and hear um, survivors. You can come and hear uh, local legislators. We will be there. Um, You can purchase a ticket online. Uh, We've posted a link on Facebook as well for the Freedom Dinner, January 11th at 6 p.m. Yeah, and so we'll also be on the Loretta McNary Show on January 21st. Wow. Um, We're going to be at Bethesda Word Christian Life January 24th. (laughs) You're doing a lot. Well, we want to know, so let's get it all in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
All and right. then the last thing we're going to do, can I mention this? One last thing we're going to do on sure. January thirty, January 31st, which we'll also post the details on, is um, we're having a, um, a cross-cultural training. And what that means basically is and it, it's, it helps us in the reach, rescue, and redeem aspect, but it's really for all believers who want to reach people of other cultures with the gospel. Because there are, are cultural differences, and we need to understand that as we approach someone who is not yet a believer. And Amen. so on January 31st, and we'll post that, um, we have a, a friend from Pakistan, and um, she works with 1014.org Ministries, and she will be in town that morning at City Gate on January 31st, and then we're going to have her that evening do cross-cultural training uh, here locally. So you're going you're gonna to post this on your face. That's the easiest way, your Facebook, R3. Yeah, page, yeah, probably. find us Amen. on Facebook, R3 The Movement. Yeah, I'm going to put... The Mo- I'm going to put that link wherever you hear this podcast, so it'll be there. So, so will your website, and that's probably the best way to contact you is just Facebook, or yeah, uh, Facebook. Well, and you can email us at info at r three the movement dot org. Um, you know, you can call us, um, email probably email inbox on Facebook. Um, you can go in and make a request for a speaker on the website. You know, that yeah. all comes to that email address. Yeah. All right. Tina, thank you very much for sharing. This is a really worthwhile cause. I'm glad you're doing it. And I'm thank glad you're here locally so we can help. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you for giving us a voice in that, Conrad. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. R3, Reach, Rescue, and Redeem. Talk about an awesome ministry to support. I'm going to have the links to r3themovement.org. That's R, the number three, the movement.org, and the Facebook page in the show notes. So you can follow, get involved. And remember to share this with your friends and family. Let's take some action. Let's do something. Let's build the kingdom together for Jesus. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.